Good morning. It's Sunday morning again. Thank you for coming in and allowing me to be in your living rooms this morning. I just pray that God's blessing will be upon you. This morning I want to talk about something that is very dear to my own heart. It's God's faithfulness to us. The passages of scripture that we're going to share with each other this morning tells us how faithful God is to us and will be for us. This portion of scripture is found in Matthew, the 14th chapter. And interestingly enough, it's one of the few passages that is found in all four Gospels. And so God lays great weight in what he says to us through this passage, through this event in Jesus' life. And we need to see how God wants to touch our lives as he touched the lives of those that day. So let's read together this portion of scripture found in Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 13. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fishes, they answered. Bring them to me, he said. And directing the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. And they all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. This portion of scripture helps us to understand God's graciousness and faithfulness to us. But the background to this story is actually a tragic one. And it's one that propelled Jesus to seek out a solitary place. I don't know about you, but when I have troubles or things happen that I can't figure out or that just really hurt inside, I want to be alone. I just want to be by myself with my own thoughts, think about what's going on. And in this case, Jesus had just heard that his cousin, John the Baptist, had been beheaded in that his head was offered to the daughter of Herodias on a platter. Kind of gruesome, isn't it? And yet when Jesus got these words, it touched him. And it touched him deeply. We can't just say, well, he's God, so he knows where John went. He went to heaven, obviously. But I think we need to realize that this affected him profoundly. I'm sure he was grieving inside. I'm sure he was hurting inside. Here's his cousin, the one whom he loved, the one who baptized him in the Jordan. He was no longer there. And suddenly, he needed space. He needed to go to a solitary place. So taking his disciples, he climbed into a boat and said, let's go. And on their way, people in various communities along the lakeshore saw that Jesus was out there. And it says that when they heard that he was going to there or to a place, they followed along. Men, women, children. Following along to see where Jesus was going. And as he was coming to the place where he wanted to go, Suddenly he realized there was a huge crowd of people standing along the shoreline waiting for him. And sometimes in the middle of tragedy, we need to look at to see what 
others are standing there before us. And so Jesus saw them. And one of the other gospels says that he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. And he had compassion on them. I like that word compassion. Because it's taking one into the heart. And he took them into his heart. And when he hit the shoreline, he healed their sick. He set the captive free. Because that's what he was called to do. So even in the midst of trial, in the midst of pain personally, he saw the greater need that the kingdom of God should be expanded to those around him. They listened to him that whole day. They listened to him talk about the kingdom of God. They listened to him talk about hope. They listened to him talk about love. They listened to him talk about acceptance. They listened to him talk about how God is not the one who wants to shame you, but rather wants to free you from shame, free you from guilt. Set the captive free, as it were evening came and the disciples knowing the need of the probably their own stomach scrawling by the way need of the people for food and not being near any towns or villages realizing that they only had so much they were desirous that he would send them on their way but Jesus turning to his own disciples in a teaching moment tells them, you feed these people. You feed them. And I think of how God wants to bring us to a teaching moment as well this morning. How he wants us to bring into us into his heart to rely upon him as these disciples were learning to do. And I'm glad it's a learning process. that We don't learn it all at once, but it's a step-by-step -step process. So there are four things that happen that help us with our faith walk here. First of all, it's interesting to me in one of the other Gospels, it says that Andrew found a boy who had a small meal who, had, who had, he had brought with him. The boy had brought it with him. And so he brought the boy and the meal to Jesus. And he said, here's what we have. So when we talk about having faith, when we're in the middle of trials, we're in the middle of, of, of anxieties in our lives, start with what you have. Look around. What do you have? I can tell you what you have. You have God. You have his word. And if you fill yourselves with his word, his word will show you or bring light to what the next step needs to be in your life. And so they started with what they had. Five loaves, two fishes. And so the next thing they did was with what they had, do you have troubles? Do you have anxieties? Those are things you have, okay? You have those. Give them to Jesus. Give them to Jesus. And that's sometimes easier said than done. Yet scripture teaches us that he casting all our care on him for he cares for you is what we need to do and so let's cast our cares on him he took the five loaves and the two fishes and he transformed them into a banquet of unimaginable proportion for the people that were there. He looked to heaven. And he gave thanks. For what he had. And he said father I thank you. For what you've given me. And he began to break the bread. And pass it to the disciples. And as he break the bread. It continued to break. And break. And break. And break. 
and break. And they began to pass and pass and pass. 5,000 men besides women and children. I've heard some, I've read some uh, commentaries suggest anywhere between 15 and 25,000 people, 1,000 meals were fed that evening. And after the meal was completed, the disciples were told to pick it all up, and which they did. But as Jesus was getting ready to pass the food out, it's number three on the things that he asks us to do. And that's to obey his command. Jesus told the people to sit. Sit in groups. Sit in a place. And I am interested that a number of times God tells us to stand firm or stand fast. Stand therefore. In Ephesians, it says, stand. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't like standing that long. But stand nonetheless. Stand until the answer comes. Stand until God demonstrates his faithfulness to you. Stand on his word and see what he will do. And lastly, the thing, the outcome. We've already talked about it. The disciples picked up how many baskets? Representing a single basket for each of the disciples so they would understand that God is faithful and is more than enough. And that he proves himself as who he revealed himself through Abraham as God called Jehovah Shalom or El Shaddai. The God who is more than enough to meet our need. Stand fast in him, I say to you today. Just as they did on this mountain. Can you imagine the joy and the peace that the fullness that they felt their needs were fully met that day both body soul and mind because Jesus is the answer let's pray father God I just pray in the name of Jesus that each who have heard this message today regardless of what they're going through would allow their need of life to be put into your hand and God you would take that need and you would transform it into an answer to that need. And you'd bring hope and joy and peace and healing and all that we need in Jesus' name. Amen.